Hey everyone. So we're going to talk today um, about the perfect passive, okay? The per passive of the perfective aspect. So that means um, the perfect passive and the pluperfect passive. Um, you all know by now that the signs, of, what are the traditional signs or the, the usual signs of the perfect? There's the reduplication when the verbal stem begins with a consonant. Um, and then there are other things like, you know, the, the type pepideo or lelu or, and so forth, or kekeleo. Um, that's the stuttering phenomenon. And then there's the aspiration of, of uh, stems um, that have a, end in a consonant, like pempo, okay? The perfect is pepomph with a fee. The p at the end of pemp becomes a fee. And you also there get a vowel change, which is another thing you can have, have in a perfect stem. But anyway, we're going to talk about the basic category, the regular ones, and then we're going to give you some clues about how to deal with the more irregular ones. So it, we put up the perfect passive of luo. It's easy to write. And you can see that this is our, this is our beautiful, most beautiful systematic form ever. Um, what is it that typifies it? Well, you've got the reduplication, so you've got le added on in front of the lu, and then you have the the perfect, I mean the passive endings tacked on right after the the stem lu. What's missing is the thematic vowel. Okay, and so this is a global thing about the perfect passive, both the perfect and the pluperfect passive. They are athematic verb forms. Mm. Okay. There's no thematic vowel between the personal ending, my sai tai metasta ntai, and main sa ta metasta and the and the um, and the actual stem of the verb. Okay, um, it's a distinctive feature in itself because the, the, we're talking about verbs that are typified by the alternation of the e and the o vowel as a linking vowel between the verbal stem and the personal ending, okay? So it's an additional feature along with the reduplication, along with the aspiration of final consonants, and along with vowel change in the stem. So, um, and notice the other thing is that in a case of like this, because there is no E or O vowel before the second person singular form, you don't have any contraction. So you actually get to see the psi, and when we get to the pluperfect in a moment, you'll see that the sa remains intact. So it couldn't be more systematic and regular, okay, and and consistent with what you would guess it to be, right? Um, if you look at now at the screen with the pluperfect, what do we have? We've augmented it, okay, so you have the syllabic augment in front of the reduplicated thing, eh, um, and then you tack on, without any thematic vowel, once again, the secondary passive endings, main, sa, ta, metha, sve, and nta, okay? Um, Beautifully clear, beautifully consistent, beautifully systematic set of things. And I think you, you know, if I put those up for you and said, guess what this is, you would have guessed it. All right. Now, there is a complicating factor, however. And that happens with, we call them special cases, consonant stems. But there are a heck of a lot of Greek verbs whose stem ends with a consonant, like tempo ends with a P, grapho ends with a phi, fulato ends with a gamma, and so forth. Um, what happens then is because there's no thematic vowel, look at what happens with grapho. You get ge, what was originally ge graf my, the phi at the end of the stem of grapho becomes a mu because of the my, okay? It's not that, so, so the key thing here is that the personal endings are the things that need to be consistent, the my, psi, tai, the metha, and the sthe. There are stars there for the third person plural because there, that no longer works what used to work for the third person plural in classical Latin Greek. You learn, you learn what we do in this case for the third person plural of consonant stems later on. Okay, um, so you don't have to worry about it. But, but notice the principle here: you preserve those personal endings, and the same goes for the pluperfect. We haven't put them up, but but the same thing happens. But you sacrifice the final consonant in the stem. It can change. It can remain as a phi, as you see in. The second person plural is gegroth. It can get turned into a mu because the ending begins with a mu, as in gegrammai and gegrammetha. Um, it can turn into a pi before the s or before the t. Okay, so gegroth becomes gegrop. It becomes, it loses its aspiration. Okay, I, I, we don't think that this is something you should tangle with. Okay, 
what you want to do is understand the principle and understand the kinds of things that you can see, which is the de deformation or the transformation of the final consonant in the stem, um, so that the personal endings are, are, are recognizable. That's key, okay? Mm -hmm. And then a form of the stem is also recognizable, that you can recognize. We don't want you to bother trying to memorize these things and the changes that happen. We think that's fruitless because you'll be, you'll be able to tell them when you see them. Um, there is one really weird thing that happens. Look at the second person plural. The ending of the second person plural should be sve with a sigma theta epsilon. Um, that S disappears because that would really change things in a, in a weird way. So the S is completely gone there. you got to know that that can happen. And when you see a form like that, a st what should be a st being a th, you know that it's, it's going to be the perfect passive of a, of, of a verb whose stem ends with a consonant. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you can look over those forms. We don't want you to bother memorizing them. We want you to learn the ones that are systematic of the type luo and paideo, the ones that end with a vowel. And we think you can, you can deal with these when you see them. So right. your, your fifth and sixth principal parts will help you right. know what to expect in these yeah. consonant clusters. Yeah, the, the, the fifth principal part is the perfect passive form, okay? So it will help you exactly. So it, it's gegramai and gegrafein for the aorist passive, right? right? Mm -hmm. In case of grapho. So that's why we, we learn principal parts that give you a clue. All right. Thanks.